again. So in this video, we are going to go through updating fonts. Now with Divi, there are a few different ways that you can set up fonts. Uh, my preference is to use the theme builder, which is how uh, fonts are set up in this particular theme. I like to use this method because it allows you to control your fonts essentially site wide without, without getting into any coding. The other methods are to either set your fonts within each individual module, which is very time intensive, or to use CSS, which requires CSS knowledge. Now quickly, let's take a look at the changes that we're going to make. So this is what our site looks like right now. We've been working on some changes in the last few videos, and uh, this is what we are changing things to. So getting th into things here, we're in the theme builder, and you'll see we have a global header, body, and footer. Now the fonts are controlled separately for each of these elements. So in this video, we're going to cover the global body only, and we'll do the header and footer in the next video. So go ahead and click into the global body by clicking on that pencil icon. And once it loads here, you're going to see these frames around the top. We've got the blue for the section, the green for the row, and the gray for the module. So we're going to go ahead and open the module by clicking on that gear icon. And you'll see this is called post content settings. So this whole page is controlled by the single module here. And if we go over to the design tab, you'll see we have the section for text and the section for headings text. And if I hover over the text, you'll see it highlights all the text sections of the page. And if I hover over heading text, it highlights all the headings throughout the page. So this is what we are going to edit. Now I have my fonts picked out ahead of time, which you can do as well, or you can play around with fonts as you work through these steps. Divi comes preloaded with Google fonts. So for the purposes of this video, we are going to stick with you using the fonts that are available to us. So starting here with uh, the text settings, I want to change this font, the overpass mono to something called enter. Now, when I clicked that drop down box, you'll see it has this massive list of options here. So this is where you can experiment with different fonts or if you have your fonts picked out ahead of time, you can just enter the name and quickly find it like I did. Uh, now you'll see in the background here, everything changed. Now within the uh, text area here, there are some additional settings that we've got. We've got the font weight and some fonts are going to have several options like this. Others will have just a few. I'm going to set mine to light. And my text size, I'm going to adjust that up just a little bit to 15. And the letter spacing and line height, those are all settings that you can play with, but I'm happy with mine as is. Now, the other thing I want to draw your attention to is up here. Uh, these tabs. All the settings that you adjust here under this first tab should by default carry over to these other tabs. But if you want to further adjust the settings, you can click through and do that. The first tab sets uh, how links will appear throughout the site. And if we look in the background here uh, where I'm hovering, you can see my pointer changing. And this little bit of text here shows you how your link, what your links will look like uh, throughout the uh, body of your website. Now, uh, right now, let's see if I scroll down here, uh, I want to show you these tabs as well. Uh, the tab on the left is a standard desktop presentation, whereas the pointer tab here on the right is where we set our hover options. And you see when I click that, this text up here changed to red. And I don't want that though on my site. I'm going to change it instead to this peachy color. So up here now we can see how that changed to the peach color. Now if I switch back to the desktop, you'll see that go away. Okay, so then up here going on to these other tabs, these are your uh, ordered lists and um, I'm sorry, unordered lists and ordered lists. And if you scroll down in the background here, whoop, if you scroll down in the background here, uh, you can see that you've got samples of these. The unordered list has just the bullets. Uh, the ordered list has the numbers next to it. 
So if you want to make any changes to these two tabs, you can. Then the last thing in this area here is called the block quote. And this feature sometimes gets used on blog posts. Uh, this is where I'm hovering here in the background, that is your block quote. And in the tab here, if I scroll down, you've got this section called the uh, block quote border color. If I hit this little uh, arrow icon, uh, it's going to reset things to the default. And you'll see that this color changed to blue. So, but that's not what I want. Uh, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and change it to black. And you can just set yours however you like. Now, moving on. Um, we're going to close up this text section and move on to the heading text. So similar to what we saw in the text section, you've got your fonts, your font weights, styles, colors, everything that you can customize here. However, you notice across the top, going from left to right, we have uh, your tabs going from H1 all the way through H6. And this is where you're going to customize each of those heading options. So I'm going to go through and update things with my new settings uh, for my H1. I'm going to change that to Cormorant Upright. I'm going to change my font weight to regular. Oh, it's already there. And then I'm going to do the same thing on H2. I'm going to go for Cormorant Upright regular and let's see h3 also going to do that cormorant regular but i'm going to turn off this all caps and i'm going to bump that font size up just a bit to 34. okay now h4 scroll down so we can watch this uh, i'm going to make those same changes here cormorant upright and regular. I'm going to remove all caps and I'm going to set the font size to 26. Okay, now my H5. I want this to match my body copy font, so I'm going to choose Enter Regular. And I'm going to take this font size up to 16. Now, when you see it kind of disappear like this, that's because it, this is the default setting, which I like in this scenario, so we're going to keep that. Now my H6, I'm going to also change that to Enter Regular. And I'll keep the all caps, but I'm going to get rid of that color. So I'm just going to hit this reset arrow and again, that just resets things to the default default settings. And my font size, I'm going to bump that up to 14, which again, you see it kind of disappear because that's, again, a default setting. So everything is looking pretty good to me here. Now, there's one other thing I want to show you. Going back to our H1, uh, I want to adjust the font sizes for mobile. Now, I don't adjust the font size for all my headings, but I for H1 and H2s, I typically do. So when you see these three tabs here, it's an indicator that the settings have been customized for different screen sizes. You'll notice if I go back to my H6, that uh, you don't see that those headings, and that's because there's no customizations here. If I wanted to add a customization, you just kind of hover here until you get these little icons popping up and then I would just click the mobile icon and you see those three tabs appear. But I'm going to turn that off because I don't want to do that customization. We'll head back to our H1, down to the font size, and now to toggle between your different views in the background here, you can click in the lower left corner and you can toggle between desktop, tablet, and mobile. And then you can see what everything's going to look like on the different screen sizes. So I'm on my mobile view now, and you can see the H1, it looks kind of big. So I'm going to take that down just a bit over here to, let's see, I'm going to take that down to 50. And my tablet, if I click over here, you'll see the screen adjusts. And I'm going to take that down to 
55. And then continuing on, I'm going to click on my H2. And I'll set my tablet view to 45. And the mobile view, I'm going to set that to 40. Okay, so pretty happy with these settings. Now you can always come back and adjust these. Uh, settings as you go. I typically find that as I'm working I'll want to tweak things which maybe you will as well. But for now I'm going to go ahead and click this click the green check mark to save changes and then I'm gonna click save down here to save the layout. But before we exit out I want to explain one other important detail about using the Global Builder for your fonts. So I'm going to open this back up again and going back to the text and the heading text here. Any setting that you customize within this text area can be overridden when you're editing individual pages. Whereas any settings that you customize under the heading text area cannot. So for example, say I have one area of my site where I want to use a different heading font than like this cormorant upright. When using the theme builder to control your fonts, I'm not really able to do that. There's a few workarounds to this, including setting up custom builder layouts or using a bit of CSS, but ideally you'll just make use of your different H tags for any variations that you want. Now I should note that's only true of options where you've actually customized the setting. Uh, any option that has the default setting still applied, like this heading text color, uh, that can still be overridden at the module level. Um, but as I said a minute ago, anything uh, in this text area, any, any setting in this text area can still be overridden on the front end. So if you have an area that you want to customize with something different than what you set up here in the builder, you can just tag it as paragraph text rather than heading text. And that's something that we're gonna take a closer look at in a minute. For now though, let's just exit out of here Go ahead and click Save Changes to save any changes you've made along the way, and then we'll exit out. And once you're back in this uh, builder screen here, if this green button says All Changes Saved, then you're good to go. But uh, sometimes it will save it will it will say Save Changes, in which case you want to go ahead and click it and make sure your changes are saved before you move on. So now I'm going to go to the front end of my site. And we're going to take a look at what's changed. So again, this is what it looks like before. And then now I'm going to hit refresh. And we'll see that there's some changes here. Um, so up here in the quote, you won't see any changes just yet because this module has been customized and we're going to walk through that next. But if we scroll down, you can see that the other uh, copy on the page has been updated. The projects header looks different. The uh, blurb font, the accent font over here on the left and the right side. Uh, all that has changed. And if we click over to the about page, you'll see this has all changed as well. So again, that's the nice thing about using the theme builder to control everything because it updates the fonts all at once. Now back to the home page. I want to show you what I was referring to when talking about the ability to override settings. If we click, well, first I'm going to enable my visual builder here. And if we click into the projects title, and I try to change this font, so I'm gonna to go to my design tab, heading text, and into the H2 area. You'll see right now it says default, so it's just pulling from what I've previously set up as to be the default. If I try to change this though to, let's say, this April fat face, it doesn't change. But if I try to change the color, maybe I try to make it this peach color, you see it will change. And that's because in the theme builder, I'm going to open that back up and go to the design tab and the heading text and to my H2 tab. We have our H2 font is set to this Cormorant upright, which means we can't change it on the front end. Okay. But I did not set any color here, which means that we could change it on the front end. So 
Now taking another look, let me just close this up. Um, I want to talk about this quote now and uh, we're going to see the example of where we can change some things using the, uh, the um, paragraph style. So if we open this up and look at click into the to the text here, you'll see this this is where you tag it as either h1, h2, h3, and so on, or paragraph. And uh, now it's tagged as a paragraph, but it looks different than the text styles that text styles that we set back in the theme builder, which is these little sections of of, of copy here. And that's because we're able to override those settings. Now, so if I hit the little reset arrow here, like that, now it's going to go to that enter font, but the size is off. That's because we have the setting here. So again, I'm going to hit the little reset arrow. And now it's looking more like the body copy that we set up over here in the theme builder. Okay. But for our purposes, I'm just going to exit out of here because I don't actually want to save those changes. And then I'm going to open it back up and we will walk through adjusting these settings to match our new look, uh, which again, that's just this over here. So I'm going to go into the design tab and under text. And like I said, we're going to change this font to enter. And I'm going to change that to light. Oh, actually I'm going to change that to ultralight looks better. And then I'm going to take the font size down to 52. I'm going to move this over here. And then I'm going to remove my text spacing. And I'm going to adjust my line height just a bit, taking it up to 1.1. Okay, and this looks pretty good to me now. So I'm going to go ahead and click Save. And I'll save on the page as well. So just reiterating that when you have a section of text that you want to be able to modify such that it's different than what you've set up in the theme builder, just tag it as paragraph text and you'll be able to customize it however you want. Okay. If it's tagged as a heading like this, if it's tagged as a heading, you won't be able to override those settings. All right, so that's it for this video. You can see that we still have this uh, creativity word here that has not been modified yet. We're going to get to that in a future video as well. But the next thing we're going to tackle is updating our colors and fonts in the header and in the footer. So we will see you there.